Well, good morning, Kid Nation. Good to see you on this Monday morning. Well, let me tell you something. We had a really, really good time yesterday in our live outdoor service. If you didn't get to get there yesterday, maybe go talk to mom or dad when you get a chance and say, hey, let's go to church this Sunday. We will be outdoors 8.30 in the morning. Bring your chair, bring your Bible. We had a good time. We got to get kind of separate Kid Nation right after worship and go sit by ourselves and have our Bible lesson. We played a little game. It was pretty fun. Uh, I'll tell you, we played uh, charades. That's where you got to act something out and let the rest of the people try and guess it. They did a really, really good job, and we had a lot of fun. Well, we're going to continue uh, with our devotions in the New Testament. We've been talking quite a bit about the life of Jesus and his disciples and what that meant to be a disciple. Um, and this morning, we're going to talk about the cost of being a disciple. Now, we've been all told um, that what Jesus did on the cross for us doesn't cost us anything, that that's a free gift from him. And that is absolutely true. We pay no price for our salvation. But once we've received salvation and we may have made that decision to follow Jesus, that's a little bit different story. So let's talk about that. Uh, we'll read this and then we'll talk about that a little bit this morning. We're in Luke chapter 9 this morning. This is actually a rather large chapter. Um, the verses that we're going to be in this morning are between 57 and 62. So there's a lot of verses in this chapter, but read the whole thing. It's so good. There's so much in there. Here we go. One day when Jesus and his disciples were walking along the road, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lie down. Later, Jesus said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Sir, let me first wait until my father has died, then I will follow you. Jesus replied, Let those who don't have eternal life take care of things like that. You go and tell people about the kingdom of God. Someone else said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first go home to say goodbye to everyone. Jesus said to him, Anyone who is distracted from doing the work I have planned is like a farmer who tries to plow in a straight line, but keeps looking behind him. So what does it cost to follow Jesus? If you were to ask a sports coach if, if you could join the A team, do you think he would invite you to play in a match with no training? Well, no, he'd tell you about the many hours of training and practice that lie ahead and before you can even have hope to be selected. Fitness and skill only come with proper training and lots of practice. Jesus told the man who was interested in joining his team that being a follower would not be easy. When we join the winning team led by Jesus, we can expect things to be tough. We must learn the rules and study examples of others in the Bible. We must listen to the Holy Spirit, who is our coach, and we need to stay spiritually fit by praying every day. Living a holy life is not easy, but the prize at the end will be better than you can ever imagine. Are you ready for that challenge? Well, let me read you our bonus scripture for the day, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this because I think that we need to. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And that's Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. So in, in the church, we talk about uh, trying to do things in our own strength. So if I was going to try, and I think we talked about lifting a refrigerator a couple weeks ago. If I tried to lift the refrigerator in my own strength, I can't do it. But have you ever used a furniture dolly? It's it's a little, uh, it's a cart kind of thing, and you can it's got it's got a little flat spot. You can slip that under like a couch or something real heavy, and then you tip it back, and you can roll it on those wheels. Well, am I doing that in my own strength now, or am I using the tool that I've been giving? That's the dolly to be able to move that piece of furniture. Well, I'm using the tool. God, when we follow him, is not asking us to do things in our own strength. It's There's a lot of, as, as was listed here, there's a lot of things to do. When, we're, when we follow Jesus, we, we need to read the Bible. We need to pray. We need to go to church. We need to be around other Christians. We need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people around us. So there's a lot of things there's a lot of things to do. But you know what the Bible says to not do while you're doing all that? It says don't get tired while you're doing all that. 
Don't, it says, the way the Bible says, don't become weary in well-doing. While you're doing what's right, don't get tired. Now, how can you do that? Have you ever worked a hard job? Maybe you had a chore outside, and it was hot outside, and you're sweaty, and it's your, maybe you're chopping firewood. When I was a kid, we had a fireplace in our house that was part of, actually, largely how we heated our home. We had a heater. We just didn't use it. So we would have to chop wood. And oh, there are few jobs as hard as chopping wood. But we would have to chop wood. And you know what? It didn't take very long and you're tired. And you go to bed that night and your body hurts. And you wake up in the morning and you're sore. Why? Because you chopped wood. But you did that work in the flesh. Okay? You... We, we that was a, that and there was nothing wrong with that. That's the only way to chop wood. If you if you stand by a pile of wood and pray for it to be chopped, it's not going to chop itself. So you just got to do it. But what Jesus is saying about the life of following Him is it's going to be very challenging. It's going to be very difficult, and you cannot do it in your own strength. You will become weary and you'll give up. And He's saying, don't become weary in well doing. So how do we do that? The first thing we do is we start and say, Jesus, this is your work. This is your strength that we're going to use to do this today. I don't want to do it all myself. Jesus, will you come be a part of this? Of course, you'll come be a part of that. If, if it's something that you're doing for his kingdom, he's always going to provide you with the power, provide you with the courage, provide you with whatever it is that you need to have. If you go read the first few verses of Ephesians, in Ephesians, it said, Paul says to the church in Ephesus, he says, God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing that you would lack nothing. He's given us everything that we need in order to follow him without becoming tired while we do it. Oh, and that's so good. Isn't that so good? Wouldn't it be amazing to just follow Jesus for the rest of our lives and sharing our testimony and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with our friends and family and not become exhausted that whole time? That doesn't mean you're ever going to need a nap. It doesn't mean that you don't need to take a break every now and then, but it does mean that we can continue pushing on towards the prize that Jesus has promised us if we run as a runner as to win a prize. Mm, that's really good. Well, let's pray, and then we're going to get on with our Monday. It's going to be a beautiful day, and I pray that you guys have an amazing time in school today, um, and that you get a chance to just do something fun. Well, Jesus, we love you. We're so grateful for this morning. We're really thankful for yesterday morning and being able to meet together in person, face-to-face, play a little game, have our Bible study, how to do the things that we love to do together. We're just really thankful for that, Lord, and we look forward to more opportunities to be together. I just pray over each Kid Nation student today as they're doing some distance learning in, in school, and Lord, that they're able to stay focused on their on their uh, subjects and focused on the work that they're able to get done, Lord. We're just really thankful for that, Father. We just love you so much, Jesus. Oh, in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I love you, Kid Nation. It was good to meet with you this morning, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.